Hello and welcome to a yarn crawl in Oslo in Norway. So I'm currently in Norway visiting my parents. They live just outside Oslo in the town where I grew up. And a few days ago I popped into Oslo on my own for a day and I visited five yarn shops. So do keep watching and I'll take you around some of the best yarn shops in Oslo. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns, I do knitting workshops online and in person, and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. I have all the links to uh, all my social media and how to sign up for my newsletter and all that kind of stuff below this video. And you can also find links to all the yarn shops that I visited in Oslo. I will also put the names of the yarn shops and the places where they are on the screen because Norwegian names can be a bit difficult to um, understand if you don't speak Norwegian. So I'll put that on the screen below, um, but all the shops will be linked below as well. So if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. So before I came to Norway, I'd actually picked out four shops that I wanted to visit. Two of them I'd been to before, two of them I hadn't. Two of them are very close to each other. I probably would have missed up one of them if they hadn't been just a few minutes walk from each other. And they're in a part of Oslo that I'm not familiar with at all. I'm not sure if I've been to that part of Oslo, but I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to take you through the tour in the order I did it in, tell you a little bit about each shop. I took some footage in each shop, took more probably in the first one than the other ones. Um, because as it got later in the day, I think it got busier and I try not to get too many like regular shoppers in the footage. So um, I will tell you a little bit about each shop and my views on them and what I felt like shopping in them. And then I'm going to share with you what I bought. I have a bag full of stuff. Actually, that bag's empty now. <laughs> I put all the stuff out and put it on the table in the order I bought it in. Um, I'm actually filming this in my parents' uh, spare bedroom so that I remember what I did um, before I get home because I think by the time I get home I might have forgotten what I bought where. So I got the train into Oslo. I got there about probably about half past nine, just after half past nine. And I walked up the main street. When you get to the Oslo Central Station, if you come out the main entrance, you basically if you go straight ahead you basically go straight up the main street so that's what i did and um i was hoping to be able to look in a few shops but most shops in norway don't actually open until 10 o'clock so i walked to the halfway up the street and turned into what is now designer street which i had no idea um it's where the department store called stem and strum is located and i used to work there as a 17 year old for a year I worked uh, two summer holidays and like school holidays in between and Saturdays uh, for a year. So I spent a lot of time there. The department store is still there, although it's very, very different from what I used there. But the street that the department store is in is now turned into like a designer shopping area, which wasn't there when I worked there. But they got brands like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, um, I think Prada, Hermes. Uh, Dior, Chanel and a few others, I can't remember, but um, quite a few designer brands there. The stores weren't open when I walked past. I actually waited outside the department store for a little bit till they opened and I had a look around there because I didn't want to get to the yard shop as they were opening and or wait outside as they were opening. So pop into the department store. Good tip, if you're in that part of Oslo and you need the toilet, the department store do have toilets on the top floor. So, um, public toilets, I don't think, I don't feel like public toilets are that easy to find in Norway. So heading for a department store is always a good idea. So uh, that's another reason why I went in there. 
and when I came out of the department store the first shop I visited is just around the corner it's kind of in the next street above on the left um, I'll put all the links and everything below easiest way to find your way around is just to have Google Maps or whatever Apple version the iPhone version is on your phone and just put in the name of each shop and then you'll find it easily and then you can work out a route between each shop as well so it's fairly easy to find I've been to this shop before um twice before the first time was in the summer of 2020 when they were in a different location across the road from where they are now and then I, last time I came to Norway last winter I also went just very quickly with my mum for a few minutes there is a tram stop nearby from the it's a tram that goes from Oslo central station to Arkebrygge which is a popular kind of harbour side shopping restaurant area in Oslo and the shop is just around the corner from the Norwegian Parliament, quite close to the Norwegian Royal Palace, so quite and quite close to a lot of like central shopping areas and attractions in the city centre. So it is a really easy shop to pop into. So the shop is called Fru Christ, which means Mrs. Christ. Um, and it's a really nice shop. The first person who greeted me when I walked into the shop was uh, a lady called Lotta. She is known as Oslo Knitter on Instagram and I've followed her on Instagram for a few years now. So I recognised her straight away and then I said, actually I do follow her on Instagram. So it's nice to actually meet her in person. I'm not always brave enough to say that I recognise people from Instagram, but I did. Um, and then I asked if I could film a bit and I had a look around the shop. And I took a bit of footage. It's a really nice shop. It's not just yarn and like knitting, crochet accessories, equipment. They also have a small section which is more like general gifts. I think when they were in their old shop they used to have more like general gifts and toys and things. But in this new shop it seems to be mostly yarn. But there, are, there's like an area for other things there as well. But it's a really, really nice shop. So... I will show you the footage and then I will come back and show you what I bought in that shop. The last time I was in that shop, I bought a couple of balls of um, what's it called, knitting for olive, um, this pure silk, which I then went on to actually knit a sweater in, which I still haven't finished a pattern for and I still haven't released yet. If you're watching this later on, maybe I have released it, but at the time of filming this, I've not finished writing the pattern. I have finished knitting the sweater. I only bought two balls and then I bought the rest when I came back to the UK and that's where I bought the original uh, two balls of yarn. Um, this time I was trying to decide what to buy. I am travelling with hand luggage only so I have a carry-on suitcase and a backpack and my little crossbody bag and it was very full when I got here. Um, there were a few things I bought that I'm not bringing home with me and I'm also leaving some clothes here for the because for, we're coming back at Christmas. So I am planning to leave a few items of clothing here. Um, so my suitcase won't be as full going back but I also had to think about how much yarn I buy in terms of I need to get it back in my carry-on only so I was trying to be restrained I have bought this yarn before I think or at least it looks similar it may not be exactly the same I don't know maybe it's not um, I've seen yarn on these kind of cones but I don't know whether it's the same company but it's this yarn so it says Ito is a Japanese yarn 
it says Eatle on the front. I bought some yarn similar to this on these kind of cones a few years ago at a knitting show in London, quite a long time ago, probably like 10, 15 years ago. Um, and I don't know if I've ever used it. Anyway, this the yarn I bought before, I don't think had like a proper label on it or anything. And I can't remember what the company was called. This might actually be a different company. So it says Eto on the front. So I'm not sure that that's the name of the company. And then on the side here, it says Kino. So I don't know whether Kino, oh no, at the bottom here it says uh, EtoYarn.com. So it is the name of the company, it's Eto. And the name of the yarn is Kino. And it's 100% silk. It's a kind of, um, slightly kind of, I don't know whether you can see, slightly kind of rough silk not like smooth silky silk if you like and it is 50 grams and 425 meters so it's a lace weight and i have no idea what i'm going to use it for but i really liked it i like the color uh it's something a bit different so i decided to get that i also thought that one good idea if you're visiting yarn shops especially when you're on holiday and you want to buy something but you don't have that much space in your luggage Buying accessories and notions and things like that is a good idea. So originally I picked out these two little tins um, and I was thinking about just getting those but then I saw that yarn I thought oh, I quite fancy it. So these tins have like a slidey lid. Um, I quite often like using tins to put beads in when I'm knitting beads. I'll quite often put them in a tin um, because I find them easier to access than in a, the bag they normally come in. Or you can use them for stitch markers and things like that. So I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but I thought they were really pretty. And they are kind of, hang on. That one, that's the way up. That one looks kind of a little bit Japanese inspired, I think. And then that one. So um, I thought they went and colour matches perfectly with the yarn. So I got that at the first yarn shop, which is called Through Quist, and I'll put the link below. So my general... Um, feeling in Druquist is that it's a very friendly shop, they get quite busy, they speak English in there, so if you only speak English or you speak another foreign language but you know how to speak English, you wouldn't have any problems. I don't know whether all the staff speak English, I think the, I heard somebody come in and she was, uh, she spoke English and um, the staff member who served her spoke perfect English. That might have been Lotta who's also a knitter, but most Norwegians at least my age and younger will speak English and even people like my parents age and younger will usually speak English. So the general kind of image I guess of knitting around the world is that uh, or at least in the UK and I think probably also in the US is that knitting is for older people. Um, I'm probably move, slow, gradually moving into that category but in Norway, knitting is still very popular with young people. And I know young people knit all over the world, but it has got an image in the UK. A lot of yarn shops seem to be owned by slightly older women, or at least like 40s, 50s and above. Um, a lot of staff seem to be slightly older, like 50s and above. Um, so it has kind of that kind of image, I think. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but in Norway, you do see a lot of younger people involved in knitting and working in yarn shops um which i think is really great so knitting is very popular in norway and it is something that a lot of younger people do as well and most of the shops all actually all the shops that we're in apart from one maybe um the staff are relatively young which was really nice to see So after I'd been to um, Druquist in the city centre, I walked across the city centre to another department store called Glass Magazina, which 
um, the department store that I used to work in, Stern and Strom, used to be the biggest department store in Oslife. I think it probably still is. And then Glass Magazine, there was the other department store, which was a bit smaller. And still is. <laughs> so I walked across there. It's only probably like a 10 minute walk from uh, First Town Shop through Quist. I actually walked by the Parliament building and took some photographs and some video there. And then I walked down to the uh, Glass Magazine there. It is next to the Oslo Cathedral, so if you want to visit Oslo Cathedral, I've never been inside, to be quite honest. The doors were open and I did consider going in, but I decided not to. Um, but I don't know whether it's worth visiting or not, because I've never been in there. <laughs> so um, I went to the Glass Magazine. There is a chain of stores in Norway called Husfliden, which uh, specialise in kind of arts and traditional arts and crafts. So they sell a lot of ready-made stuff. They special, they do a lot of national costumes. Each kind of region, town, valley in Norway have their own national costumes. So they specialize in that. They sell ready-made national costumes. I'm assuming they may do made to order, I don't know. Um, because national costumes are often made to order. At least mine was. And they do uh, all the stuff that goes with the national costume because you need to have special jewelry with it each national costume has its own jewellery and you have their special shoes and this, uh, for men their special socks and things so there's a lot of special things so they sell all that they also had some machine knitted Norwegian style sweaters and they had some other kind of handmade um, or Norwegian made things uh, there as well and then um, they're in the basement of the shop and then at the other end they have a big yarn shop. I did not realise how big it was. Um, they, I didn't look at too closely at all the brands they sold. They definitely do Daimler, which is a Norwegian yarn company. Um, but they probably do, and I think they do Sunless as well. I didn't look at all the different brands they stock there. Nobody approached me in that store and asked me if I wanted help. And there were a lot of people, well not a lot of people because it was still fairly early, but there were people wandering around who were definitely tourists. I saw people, I heard people who were Americans um, and there was somebody working there because there was somebody helping somebody else but nobody approached me and I was there for quite a few minutes wandering around looking at stuff and filming but I decided not to buy anything in there so I just had to look around and wonder. To me it felt a little bit more impersonal, it might have been if the staff member hadn't been busy and they had approached me, it might have felt more personal but out of the shops I visited this is part of a chain and I feel like it's a bit more aimed at tourists maybe and to me it just didn't feel as personal as uh, the other shops I went to but if you're in the city centre it's a really easy shop to get to they have a great selection I think Fruquist is nicer <laughs> but they do have a really good selection there of Norwegian yarns and you can also get other crafts and stuff and at the time I visited in the um, like downstairs when you come in the main entrance you just get the escalator downstairs they also had like a second-hand vintage type um, shop there as well. So I had a quick browse around there as well, but I didn't buy anything. When I came out of Glass Magazine, I jumped on the tram. I did consider cycling to the next location. It's not, I can't remember how far I was to walk. It's not that far to walk. I think like maybe half an hour, something like that. I'm not sure. Um, I did actually think about hiring a bike. Also have the town bikes, which are, um, I don't think they're electric, but I'm not sure because I've never used them, but they are, they can be found as like docking stations. I don't know how easy they are to rent because I haven't tried them. They also have a lot of scooters scattered around the city and they have the Lime electric bikes. Lime is a company that I used in London when I was there last to uh, ride across London. So I had the app on my phone and it's all set up. So I considered renting a line bike and cycling to the next location, but it was quite warm the way there I went to Oslo. And I thought I'm gonna ride, I was struggling a bit with overheating anyway. So I decided not to. And I also knew that I would probably have to cycle up the same road as the tram and cycling on roads where there are tram tracks is something I don't really like. You gotta be careful when you're cycling and there are tram tracks or train tracks. Uh, like embedded into the road because they're very slippery so if you hit them with your wheel your bike wheel they're very very slippery and they are also you can get your wheel stuck in the actual track so I decided I did not want to cycle so I jumped on the tram if you download 
the uh, travel app called Rooted, R-U-T-E-R, -E um, which you can download from your app store and you add your payment card. You can add a foreign payment card because I did and I put in my British mobile phone number. You can then use that to um, work out where to go and also to buy tickets. I wouldn't say the app is like super user friendly, but I've managed to work it out without too much difficulty. And the best way is to use Google Maps to work out where you are and where you want to go. And then it'll give you different options. It'll tell you how far, it, how long it'll take you to walk, cycling and uh, scooters and public transport. And it'll tell you which public transport to use as well. So I use Google Maps to work out which tram I need to get. And then I don't think you can buy tickets on the tram. Um, so I have the app and I downloaded the app and bought the ticket on the app. If you are not Norwegian, you probably have a bit more leeway because they probably don't expect foreigners to know how it works. But as I am Norwegian, even though I don't live there, so I'm basically a foreigner, um, at least a tourist, I think I probably don't have that kind of leeway. But anyway, I got on the tram. I went to a part of Oslo called Grinelaka, which is a part I don't think I've ever been to before. Um, it's kind of the old part of east oslo like close to the industrial parts of oslo um old oslo it has a lot of old um apartment blocks and things like that it used to be quite a cheap area but it has been kind of gentrified and it's now a bit more of a trendy area but you can see in the shops that are there so the first shop i went to there and i only went to this shop because i was going to another shop in that same area and i noticed that this shop was like 10 minutes walk away so I decided to stop there first. So I jumped off the tram, walked to the next parallel street, if you like, and just down the street a few minutes. And I was at a shop called, go on the spell. And I was at a shop called Pickles. So pickles actually specialize in their own yarn. So they only sell their own yarn and they have their own patterns. Um, so you can't go there and buy any other Norwegian yarn brands. I wasn't interested in their patterns because obviously I design my own patterns. I probably thought I wouldn't buy anything there, but I found a color I really liked. So I did end up buying something. I would say their yarn, I didn't look at the price of all of it. But the yarn I bought certainly was not cheap. Um, compared to some other Norwegian yarn companies. So I do think it's a little bit more expensive. It is a tiny shop. It had a young woman working in there and um, there's a customer in there when I arrived and then she left and I asked if I could film a little bit and she said yes and she did make a comment about we're not fully stocked at the moment. Um, but it's a tiny shop. It's a little bit bigger than the room I'm in there but not a lot. Um, so it is quite a small shop. So I would say if you want to miss one out, that's probably the one I would miss out. I wouldn't have gone to it if I wasn't going to the other one nearby. And I probably won't make any effort to go to that again in the future because it is so small and they have their own yarn and a tiny bit of like knitting needles and things, but not really any other accessories like stitch markers and other things. Okay, so my pair, the building my parents live in, we're having a fire um, alarm test today. And I knew when it was, but I forgot to check the time when I started filming. And I was sitting there chatting, so the last segment, if you hear any kind of buzzing noise in the background, that was the fire alarm. My mum just knocked on the door and said, fire alarm's going off. Um, so we had to leave the building, it's just a test. Problem was, I'm sitting in one of the bedrooms and I could not hear it. I could hear like a buzzing sound, but I didn't know it was the fire alarm. So that was not very good. So anyway, I'm not going to film the last bit again. I'm going to try and carry on and remember where I got to. So um, I think I filmed saying that the... Um, so pickles, I if I'm in that area, I might pop in, but I don't think I would pop in otherwise. So I did buy something at Pickles. I got these two and I mainly got them because of the colour. Uh, so it is a blend of 40% baby alpaca, 40% highland wool and 20% mohair. And it has got a slightly fussy, it's like a singles yarn. And I just, the colour just called out to me. And it has 
175 meters per 50 grams is about four ply ish uh, fingering weight um, thickness. No idea what I'm going to do with it, but I really like the color, so I got those. Those after I left pickles, I think it was about a 10 minute walk to the next yarn shop, and there was a, a bike just up the street, one of the line bikes. So I thought, well, let's just cycle because it was fairly flat there. So I picked up the bike and I cycled, and most of it I was. Um, away from the main road where the trams go and the road I was cycling on was very wide and there was virtually no cars there so it felt quite safe to cycle. There were a lot fewer cars in the city centre that I remember growing up which is great when you're a pedestrian or a cyclist because it makes it a bit safer. So, cycled up the road, I went through like a little park area and then I got to where the second shop was and there is a um, like a small park area across the road and I was a bit warm so I so to chill there for a little bit, I saw this uh, woman sitting on a bench knitting with her dog. She was very young, probably in her 20s, I would say. Very rare, at least where I live in the UK, to see young people that age knitting in public. So I thought it was quite lovely. And I just sat on the park bench there for, for about 10 minutes. And then I went into a local coffee shop, got some lunch. And I mainly went in because I wanted to use the toilet. Uh, so I got some lunch while I was there. And they also had air conditioning, so it allowed me to cool down a bit. And then I popped in next door to um, another Thruqvist shop. So the first shop I went in the city centre was called Thruqvist. And this one is also uh, called Thruqvist. So it's owned by the same company. As far as I know, they have one in the city centre and one in this part of Oslo called Grinelaka. Um, it's much the one in Green Lecca is much smaller than the one in the city centre and they don't stock the same kind of yarn so I took a little bit of footage but it's it wasn't a particularly big shop I had a wander around they had some lovely yarns um, but I decided because I'd already bought two balls plus that one I was thinking I got to slow down the yarn buying so I actually got some other things there uh, which I'll show you in a second but the lady who was who worked there there's just one person working there because it's quite a small shop she was very friendly I'm sorry the lighting has gone funny because the sun's coming out but okay the lighting went a bit funny because the sun came out so I've closed the curtain partially I don't have my ring lights so I'm just relying on the natural light from the window but and it's been quite overcast today but the sun just came trying to break through um Okay, so what was I saying? So the lady was in there was very friendly. She asked me if I wanted any help. There was no other customers in the shop and I got, got there. I said, no, I just want to browse. So she let me browse. And then somebody else came in after I after me um, as she was helping. And I had a look around. They had a good selection of yarns there and they had uh, quite a few little accessories and cute little things. So I picked up a few cute little accessories. If I was going to choose between the two through Chris shops i would probably choose one in the city center because they have a lot more selection but they have different yarns at this one um and different selections so and if you live in that part of oslo you would probably pop in there and it is a nice part of oslo it is kind of traditional inner city old-fashioned oslo so if you happen to be staying nearby or you're exploring other things in that area it is definitely worth popping in um to have a look so let me show you what i got there because I did not get yarn this time. So um, one of the things that I think is a good idea if you're going to shops, yarn shops, and you don't want to buy yarn, but you want to buy something, is think about other things that you need. And I knew that I needed some new tape measures because I've thrown several away lately because they're broken. I like tape measures that have that kind of retraction thing. And I had one lately that broke, so it wouldn't retract. Um, I have one of these in brown that I got in a different yarn shop last time I was in Norway. So I got it in black, so now I got one in black and one in brown. It's a brand called Maud's and it's quite thin and quite light and I quite like it. And I have one in brown, so I got one in black. Then I picked up this one, not that I need another needle gauge, but this one it was a bit cute. So it's a needle gauge that looks like a sock. In Norway, 
needle sizes are measured in millimeter but they don't say millimeter so this one for example says 2 2.5 and you know where 2.5 is 2 comma 5 rather than 2 full stock 5 uh, 3 3.5 4 4.55 5 5.56 6.57 8 9 10 um but it doesn't say millimeter but it is millimeter so if you go into a norwegian yarn shop and ask for a size four millimeter needles they'll probably say what you mean size four because we just say size four rather than four millimeter it has this kind of uh, wire thing which is a bit flexible that i'm in a range of colors i got the purple one i was i saw another place i can't remember where that was but they actually sold these wires separately i think that was in the yarn last yarn shop i went to and you can unscrew it and so you can attach this to things what i might actually do when i get home is take this off and use it to attach like um if i can screw it back on uh use it it's actually quite difficult to screw back on um what i was thinking was when i get home i might take this off and use it um to put stitch markers on if i want to put stitch markers in my project bag for example and it's right see if i can screw this back on again it's quite difficult i might just take it off when i get home and not use it there we go i can do it now but i thought it might be a useful thing to store stitch markers on because you can thread them on here and then you can just unscrew it and take it off it's not as easy to screw it back on as i thought it would be but it probably will be when i get used to it matches my outfit today as well and my nails so I quite like that, it's very cute. It only has the numbers on one side, not the other. But yeah, quite cute. If you're an American visiting Oslo and you need American sizes, this is not your tool. This has only got millimeter sizes. And then I picked up this one and I mainly picked it up because of the print on it. So this is the print from the Norwegian Mardius sweater, which is a traditional Norwegian sweater. Every single Norwegian kid probably had one as a child. I know I did. My mum knit them off my daughters, they never wore it because it was just too thick for where we lived and too itchy. They're a bit sensitive to wool. Um, so I think I gave it to my sister when she had her kids. But everyone's, most Norwegians have had a Madhu sweater. And I like the uh, print. It's probably one of the most well-known classic Norwegian sweaters, I would say. So this has got a lemon soap stain remover inside. So it's got this soap. Doesn't smell of lemon. Um, lemon uh, essential oil is very good for stain removing. And on the back, it has the instructions, and it says rub with the soap. Wait two minutes, rinse or wash. Um, it's, the soap is hundred percent natural, biodegradable, skin friendly, organic ingredients. So I got that mainly because I wanted the bag. So I might when I go home actually. Put the soap in something else and use this back for something knitting related i don't know we'll see um but i mainly bought it because of the bag so i highly recommend through quiz both in the city center and a green uh well worth traveling out to green to go to that shop there's probably more to see and do in the green area than i did but i wanted to head off to my next shop because i was keen to get back to the city center to get home before the rush hour started because the trains get very busy in the rush hour so my next shop was Gontopia which is in a part of Oslo called Helsfjord and it's actually next to where my grandparents used to live and it's the uh, metro station that I used to use to go to my grandparents so my grandparents lived about probably about 10 minute walk from the uh, metro station you can get the metro from the city centre really really easily all the city centre metro stations you can get the metro to Helsfjord if you're getting it from the city centre, it's only a few minutes on the metro. From the central train station, it is one, two, three, four stops, I think. Yeah, I think it's four stops, so it's not very far. Um, from where I was, I decided that the best option was to get the bus. And Gantopia is amazing.
last time I went, so three years ago, it was half the size, less than half the size it is now. So I was quite surprised when I walked in. It's very easy to miss because they don't have any displays outside to indicate that there's a yarn shop. There's just a sign outside, fairly small sign saying Gontopia. You open the door, you walk in and it's over twice the size it used to be. They, I don't know whether they'd just been away to a show or something, but there was a lot of bags full of yarn um, kind of popped around the shop, which did clutter it up a little bit, to be honest. Um, I was trying not to get any of that in the video I shot, but it was a bit difficult because there was a lot of it. So it did feel a little bit cluttered from that point of view. It may be that they've just been away for a yarn show. I went on the Monday, so if they'd been away at a yarn show that weekend, that might be why. I don't know. Um, they also have they also must have a very successful online shop because they had a packing room in the back where there was a few people packing parcels and outside their parcel room packing room there was two or three big post sacks full of uh, parcels um so i think they're quite a successful shop uh, online shop as well I have a huge selection i kind of wish i'd bought more there i could have spent a lot of money there and i will definitely go there again because they're easy to reach from the city centre and I really like the selection. They had a lot of different stuff. They do more hand dyed stuff. The other shops I went to didn't really do a lot of hand dyed stuff. They did a little bit of hand dyed stuff. They did a big selection of knitting for olive stuff um, and a lot of other Scandinavian brands or European brands. Um, a lot of Norwegian brands, a lot of brands I hadn't heard of before. They did uh, a lot of accessories. They did um, leather knitting bags. I think the company is called Nude, M-W-D. I've seen them before. Um, I think that's what they're called, but I might be wrong. And they have a lot of different types of accessories and needles and all kinds of stuff. So very good shop, very good selection. I could have spent ages there. I was getting to the point where I was a bit exhausted by this point. So I came to the Knitting for Olive display and I picked up these two. Which I must admit, in the shop actually look more pink. In this light, I feel like they look a bit more red. So I might, when I go home, see how they compare to other pinks to decide whether they're red or pink. But I feel they look more pink in the shop. Um, this is the 100% Extra Fine Merino. It feels different from other merinos I have tried. Um, it might be that it changes when it washes. I don't know. Uh, it's called Pink Daisy, so I guess it probably is pink. Um, it is 250 meters per 50 gram, 100% extra, fi extra fine merino, traceable, non mulist, 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 is that what it's called? Oeco Tech Standard 100. Um, so I got two of those, 50 grams, so I got 500 meters. I don't know what I'm going to do something just with these. I was thinking maybe I will knit another um, sweater. Uh, it's the same meterage, I think, as my uh, Knitting for Olive silk that I got, um, that I knitted earlier this year. So maybe I'll knit that again in a merino, maybe I'll do something else, I don't know. Um, but I thought I'd get two, because then if I want to do a shawl or something, I can. If I want to do a sweater, I can use this for swatching, and then I can order what I want from a UK, UK shop like Beautiful Knitters, or I can order it from Grantopia next time I come to Norway. Um, and get it delivered to my parents' place. We'll see. But those were the two balls I got from Gantopia. So when you leave Gantopia, if you want to go back to the city centre, you just go out, um, head across the road to the Hellsfield metro station and jump on the metro train. Um, there are trains towards the city centre every few minutes, because I think there are three different train lines that go past there. So you can just jump on the metro, get back to the city centre um, and I got off at the central train station and then headed straight into the station building, checked where my train was and got on the train, uh, first train home. Um, so I had a really lovely day and also I spent quite a few hours there. I did enjoy doing this, it was great fun. I've been to three yarn shops I haven't been to before. So I've been to Fruquist in the city centre before, I've been to Gontopia, the last one before, but the one uh, Husfreden at Glass Magazine I'd not been to before, Pickles I hadn't been to before, and Fruquist in Greenluck I'd not been to before. Next time I come to Norway, it's going to be Christmas, so whether I will have time to go and also to go yarn shopping, I don't know. There are also two yarn shops in the town where my parents live. But if I was going to choose one of those, 
um it would probably my first choice would be through Chris, possibly uh, Who's Freed in a Class Magazine because it's right in the city centre. And then if I want to go a little bit out of the city centre, I'd probably go to Gontopia because they had such a huge range and, and it's so easy to get on the metro. So I'd probably go to them, I think. So let me know if you have been to Oslo. Do you live in Oslo? Are you Norwegian? Let me know. Uh, are you not? If you're not Norwegian, have you been to Oslo? Have you been to any yarn shops in Oslo? If you come into Oslo, for example, on a cruise ship and you only have a few hours, through Kvist is quite easily accessible from the harbour area. I don't know how long it would take you to walk, but not very far. Um, I guess like maybe 10, 15, I'm not sure the cruise ship stopped now, but I would guess maybe 10, 15 minutes, but I'm not sure. But it's quite easy to get to if you're in Oslo for a few hours on a cruise ship. If you have a little bit more time, I would also head to Gontopia as well because it's a really brilliant shop. Uh, but you do have to get on the metro for that. You can catch the bus as well, but I would say the metro is a lot quicker. So to me, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you've been to any of these shops or if you're planning a future trip to Oslo, would you visit any of these shops? Are there any other shops in Oslo that you recommend that I should check out next time I come? It is going to be Christmas, so it might not be possible because we're not here for that long and I'm coming with my husband. Um, if there are any other yarn shops you think I should be checking out, let me know. But I know there are a lot more yarn shops in Oslo that I haven't been to. Um, so yeah, tell me in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And you can find all the links to these yarn shops below in the comments in the um, description box below this video, where you can also find all my details, including my social media. I am Yarn Addict Annie on Instagram, Twitter, X, uh, Threads, TikTok, Blue Sky, Ravelry, and there's also a link to my Love of Lace Knitting Facebook group and my Ravelry shop, my Pay Hip shop, my website and where you can also sign up to my newsletter. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.
Um, Vad det du ska för nå? Är er det den som går nå? Ja. Ja.